Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about a better way to fill small gaps and and kind of stick things together. So uh, we're going to talk about making a slurry. Uh, a slurry is when you take a nice empty glass jar and you do want a glass jar you don't want something that's plastic you'll see why in a moment we take some uh, plastic cement or plastic glue in this case my preferred is Tamiya extra thin for this purpose because you can see here in the back it's you know very much a liquid uh, and so it's easy to pour and work with and we take this thing that we all have which is a uh, sprue you know a bunch of extra sprue uh, we all have some of it. It happens whenever you're working on a project, you get sprue. So the first thing you want to do is uh, we're going to take some of that sprue and we're going to cut it down into little tiny baby pieces. So we take a nice big set of, of clippers. Don't use your nice clippers, especially don't use a set of nippers for this. Sprue is very thick and heavy. And so we get in here and we just kind of start making some little pieces do to do to do don't worry I'm not gonna do this all on camera I can already hear you freaking out don't worry I'm just trying to show you basically what I do we're not worried about like them being super small we just want some nice small ish pieces smaller pieces will break down quicker it, it'll all break down in the end it doesn't really matter it's just a question of you know how long you want to wait for it to get be ready so we get some pieces like that, okay? About that size. Or we can have the stuff I already prepared beforehand. So there we go. We got all our little pieces. And we take our glass bottle. And we're just gonna put all our little pieces in here. Fill them up. Now, I can't give you an exact volume estimate, but when you shake it out, you want it to kind of cover the bottom. You see how there it's basically a nice flat amount over the whole bottom of the thing there? That's what you're aiming for, okay? So you've got a nice even layer of the uh, plastic across the, the bottom of the thing. All right? One more little piece. I'm sure there's a couple that have jumped around my desk. All right. So then we're gonna take our extra thin cement. Now, if you're feeling particularly saucy, uh, you can just go ahead and pour that straight in. You don't really need to do anything else, but obviously it doesn't pour super well. If you're gonna use some kind of pipette, uh, which you can do, you wanna make sure that it's not, uh, uh, you wanna make sure it's not plastic because <laughs> you will melt it with the plastic glue. I'm actually going to use the little thing that comes with it here, and we're just going to do the spoon trick. Okay, and we overspilled a little, but that's all right. Okay. So. Not too bad. It did do a nice job on my, of erasing my, uh, my nice grid line though there. That's pleasant. Plastic glue will eat a lot of stuff up. It's corrosive. Okay, so the amount we filled, you can see, when I tilt this sideways, you're not really gonna be able to see, but you can see how it's just enough that it sits over the top of your layer. Like you wanna have enough liquid, the, the balance here should be uh, that you cut it. Let me see if I can bring it up so you can actually see it. Oh, see, as soon as I tilt it, we'll look inside. The point is it should be at the same level as the plastic. I don't think it's that complicated, folks. You get what I mean. Fill it up until all of the plastic is covered. Okay? All right. So now that I've, that'll be a nice spot. I'll use that as my recording spot from now on. Maybe I'll put a sticker there or something. Okay. And you can see I've still got quite a lot of plastic glue left. You don't, you don't need a lot of it to do this. Now the cool part, what I, the bottle I'm using here, by the way, in case you are curious, is an old uh, Dollar Rowney FW ink bottle. This is one of my Payne's Grays that uh, is empty, and I just cleaned it out. I used alcohol and and uh, water and just let it sit there, and then mixed it up and so on and so forth. The advantage to using the Dollar Rowney bottles and why I like them is because this is a standard bottle cap. It's not the you don't want to use this thing that's normally with those because 
the little uh, pipette here that's on the end of the dowel roundy ones, it's made of plastic and it will just melt down in there. However, a normal bottle cap, which is just something like, like literally any normal bottle cap you get off of a bottle in the world, like a you know 20 ounce bottle or something. Why look at that? Screws right on, piece of cake. So now we put this in the oven and we just let it sit there. You can see how already it's starting to turn gray because all that plastic cement is just melting down that plastic. It'll take a little while. But in the end, what you get hoo -ha, is this. <laughs> We're going to do the cake in the oven trick. Uh, this is a previous bottle I had already prepared. And you can see what you have now is just a big gray slurry, right? I go through a lot of ink. I do a lot of airbrushing. So here you can see that it's, I don't know if you can see on the side, if you look right down here, this is a rough angle to film at with a liquid. Um, I'll put the cap back on so I can turn it a little more sideways and not worry about spilling it. I hear you say, but Vince, the, the cap is plastic. Well, yeah, that's true, but I don't get the liquid near the cap very often, so whatever. If you want to go get a metal cap, you can. Uh, it'll take, like, if you have the metal cap off of uh, off of various bottles, it'll those will fit as well. So you can see in there how it's just that nice little plastic slurry. Okay. That's all that's left. Now, brief note about how then to apply it. So first off, you want to make sure when you pick it up, you shake it. Uh, you know, much like, say, a Polaroid picture, for example, is how I would shake it if I was you. Uh, you can also, if you like, use something like this. This is a little uh, mixer. It's made for labs and stuff like that to mix up samples. But of course, you can you can do it here as well. This is going to shake the camera like crazy. I apologize in advance. I will only do it for a second. And there you go. And that gives us a nice quick mix of it. I'll put this back to the side. Uh, these, by the way, you can order. This one's from Lab Genius. I got this one off of uh, Amazon. They are incredibly awesome for mixing, for mixing your paints and anything else you'd want to mix. So now that we have this all mixed up and ready to go, let's grab ourselves a little model where we need to do some gap filling. Here, I happen to have one of my steam tanks for my Whirlwinds Edge army. You can see how insane this thing is. This little walker that I've made. That's one of my steam tanks. It's nice and goofy. Uh, as I as are every as is everything in this army uh, But when we flip this bad boy to the side, you'll notice we've got these nice horrible ah, You notice it'll fall over. You notice we got these nice horrible gaps where the two scenery pieces fit together Well normally you'd have to deal with like putty or something like that to fix those but Who wants to do that, right? So instead we're gonna take an old sable brush that's been destroyed. So I, you wanna use something that is real hair, not, uh, not a synthetic, because synthetics can be, will just melt in this, basically. Uh, but a, a sable hair brush, I mean, you'll ruin it. Don't use one of your nice brushes. Let me be very clear, you will ruin a brush. But this will last longer. You can actually rinse these out. So we just kinda of get down in here, mix around a little bit, and then we just pull it out. And we just push it down in that area. And we kind of just spread it around. You're basically just painting with it over the gap. Um, it will start working more or less immediately. You notice how thick it is. You notice I'm being pretty gloppy. I'm keeping big drops on there. I want that intentionally because it will melt into the plastic and settle down. So you want to add a little bit more than you kind of think you need to. Probably don't put a big drop like I just did on the bottom of the thing. That's not helpful. There you go. Okay. So we just kind of touch all our little gaps. What's nice is you can actually get like a pretty fine brush and be kind of careful with this. So you can get pretty fine gaps. Now, once in a while, if it's a really, really, like if it's a really, really big gap, puttying is still your answer. Okay, you can't cover like some massive gap. If there's like a, you know, a, a 16 or an eighth of an inch or something apart, it's that's not gonna work. 
it's just the, the glue isn't doesn't have enough stuff in it not to shrink down but when it's a gap like this you can see how it just covers it right up now that'll basically just sit there it'll sink into the plastic a little bit and then dry and we're good to go um so i'm just going to leave it sit there if you notice anything where there's kind of parts that are uh where it didn't quite cover you can go re go in and get some new stuff reactivate it it's also a good idea to just let it dry um, but you want to make sure you kind of smooth it out and you can still sand this down once it's all done so nothing changes there because once it's totally dry it will just be part of the plastic it has melted the plastic into the plastic the chemical reaction has happened and it can now completely uh it can now completely bond so I then just rinse off that little brush in, in some water over here. And my brush is more or less ready to go again. Okay. All right. So we got all our little plasticky goopy goop out of it. So I'm going to let that sit for a moment and uh, I'll let it dry. It does take a little longer than normal plastic cement to dry because we have to, because there's so much of it, right? But you can see how already that gap is nice and covered. Sometimes it takes a second application, sometimes it doesn't, depends on the, the how big your gap is. But it's just a super easy way to to, uh, to to fill these kind of lines, especially where two pieces come together. So things like these leg joints are great. Like if you've ever put together an Imperial Knight, you know they have these leg joints that are really annoying with these seams. So I'm just gonna do this whole thing and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. So back in just a moment. All right, we're back. All the glue is dry. You can tell where I applied it because it gets all shiny uh, because it's melted uh, plastic. So, you know, hence it's kind of shiny. And now, and you can see, you know, it's settled down, but the gap is gone. Now, if we want to make sure it's kind of nice and flat, because sometimes there can still be some bumpiness, you can grab a little file and you can just, you know, give that a nice quick file. Easy peasy, nice and flat. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, good to go. Uh, if you don't care about that as much, you can see here on the back where I already filed it down. Uh, you'll notice that the big crack I had, the easiest way to always test whether or not you got rid of a crack is uh, to just prime it. So, because that will very quickly reveal any spots and you can see we get a nice, flat, even space. No more crack in there. We're good to go. So, there you go. That's uh, how you can make your slurry. To just recover the basics, uh, we start with some amount of sprue. You just want to cut that into pieces. Fill an empty glass, glass bottle with a sort of even layer along the bottom or as much as you want, basically. I go for this along the bottom because I don't want it to be too full. You pour in your Tamiya Extra Thin Cement or your plastic glue of choice to a level where it comes up right above all of your little plastic pieces. Then you let it sit for about 24 hours. What you then get is something that looks like this. You want to use a nice, uh, old, old, worthless, other than this, uh, natural hairbrush where it's not gonna, where the, the bristles don't melt. I mean, here's that brush all cleaned out. It's still nice and it's the same, but nothing happened to it because you can rinse that stuff out. Uh, and then if you need to at the end, you can just sand it back down and you're good to go. So there we go. That's how you make a slurry to do some quick, simple gap filling. Again, great for those small areas like where two pieces come together in a mold. Uh, it's fantastic for that. So. There you go. If you liked that, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them down in the comments. If you have suggestions for future videos, feel free to drop those down there as well. Share and share alike with the video. That's always greatly appreciated. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.